Firstly, let me say thank you very much to the Global Sepsis Alliance and the German Federal Ministry of Health for hosting this very important scientific event. Secondly, today is a special and timely day to meet around the sepsis agenda as we celebrate 10 years of the World Sepsis Day. Much has already been done and we have more to accomplish together. Recent years have shown that the emergence of new infectious threats can cause disruption in the global socioeconomic and political architecture with consequences to health systems. Infection-related global health threats, such as severe acute respiratory infections and bloodborne viruses, and the emergence of antimicrobial-resistant pathogens are everyone's business. Furthermore, there is an ongoing silent endemic burden of healthcare-associated infections that occur every day in all the countries, mainly caused by pathogens resistant to antimicrobials. It is estimated that in 2019, the death associated with bacterial antimicrobial resistance were almost 5 million globally. And we are aware that the three most impactful antibiotic resistant microorganisms are typically acquired in healthcare. Together, they account for 70% of the burden of antimicrobial resistance and sepsis in terms of disability and premature mortality. <clears throat> the risk of acquiring <clears throat> an infection during healthcare delivery and of suffering from its deadly consequences doubles and can be up to 10 20 times higher in low- and middle-income countries. Almost half of all global sepsis cases worldwide occur in children, with an estimated 20 million cases every year. For every 1,000 women giving birth, 11 will experience infection-related severe organ dysfunction or death. But sepsis is a preventable uh, tragedy, and nothing works better than infection prevention and control. Infection prevention and control action is acknowledged as playing a prominent role in curbing emerging and ongoing infectious threats ranging from water, sanitation, and hygiene measures in the community and in healthcare facilities to preventing specific conditions such as antimicrobial resistance and sepsis. For example, hand hygiene and environmental hygiene in healthcare facilities were found to be able to more than half the risk of dying because of infections with antimicrobial resistant pathogens. Improving hand hygiene in healthcare settings could save about 16.5 US dollars for every dollar invested. Furthermore, recent data from WHO and the partners showed that the investments needed to ensure all healthcare facilities in the least developed countries have basic water and sanitation facilities are modest. 6.5 to 9.6 billion US dollars over 10 years, accounting for only 3% of current government spending on health. WHO is responding to large gaps in infrastructure, supplies, and practices, particularly in low and middle income countries, with critical steps to improve infection prevention and control action including a new resolution on this topic and a proposal for a stronger and a more inclusive health emergency preparedness, response, and resilience architecture. Both were presented and approved at the 75th World Health Assembly in May 2022. Whilst infection prevention and control is key, and perhaps the most cost-effective means 
to reduce the burden of sepsis. We are also working closely with partners, policymakers, and implementers on several fronts to fight infection-related global and local health threats and achieve the progress requested by the World Health Assembly Resolution on sepsis. For example, in the sepsis prevention field, over the last three years, we issued more than 20 guidance documents and associated implementation tools on infection prevention. We established the Global Task Force on Water and Sanitation Facilities in healthcare facilities to address key bottlenecks in this area. We launched a WHO UNICEF country tracker online that provides real-time updates on country progress in implementing the eight practical steps to improve water and sanitation in healthcare facilities. In the context of sepsis epidemiology and surveillance, we published the first global report on sepsis in 2020. We launched the global collection of data on AMR in patients with bloodstream infection through the WHO Global antimicrobial resistance and use surveillance system, which is called GLASS. We are developing adapted definitions for healthcare-associated infection surveillance, including sepsis for low resource settings. In the clinical management of sepsis field, we have developed evidence-based recommendations for the clinical management of COVID-19 and the clinical care pathway detailing the patient's journey through the health system. We recently published chapters on management of sepsis and other septic complications of severe infections within the WHO toolkit for clinical care for severe acute respiratory infections. We are currently working on the new sepsis clinical management guidelines and the WHO Academy course on primary care to support first contact providers. In the field of prevention, diagnosis, and management of maternal and neonatal sepsis, we are supporting research on improving adherence to best practices in prevention and management of sepsis. We are convening policymakers and experts to develop policy and regulatory pathways needed for the Streptococcus B vaccine. We have published key findings of implementation research on the outpatient management of possible serious bacterial infection from seven countries in the neonatal infection collection. We published the WHO coordinated multi country, multi center randomized control trial to measure the effect of kangaroo mother care initiated immediately after birth to prevent the neonatal mortality, including due to sepsis. To continue in the direction of improvement, especially at the country level, we need decisive political commitment and action by the national and local leadership at its highest levels. Continuous progress in research and effective implementation of evidence-based measures and the engagement of the community in the fight against sepsis. Distinguished colleagues, I would like to thank you very much for being such exceptional champions in the fight to sepsis, and I hope we can continue to closely work together in this endeavor. I wish you a successful meeting, and above all, real progress in the fight against preventable infections. Thank you for your attention, and back, back to you, Chair.